I remember just before the celebration, our first day lowered the Union Jack, which is the British flag. And we saw the flag came down, and the Bahamian flag came up. And the raising of the Bahamian flag. I tell you now, I feel the same way as I did that evening. Forty years have passed since the Bahamas got its current constitution, since we became an independent country, one people committed to building a nation. As we observe this anniversary, NB12 will take a look at what led us to July 10th, 1973, with the people who lived it the remaining framers of our Constitution. We invite you to join us for our independence special, The Independence Story, right here on Cable 12. Happy Independence, Bahamas. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to NB12. Coming up tonight in news, two men charged with the attempted murder of a police officer today. Summer gets off to a tragic start as a child drowns on a popular beach. Two teens allegedly forced to sleep in bushes last night, plus two fashion stars return home. We've got those stories and so much more. I'm Bonnie Toot, and NB12 starts now. Happy news tonight, less than a week after Sergeant Andrew Sweeting, the Deputy Prime Minister's aide was shot in an eastern New Providence neighborhood. Two men were today charged in a magistrate's court with attempting to murder him. Royston Jones was at the arraignment and filed this report. Eighteen-year-old Antonio Bo, who was represented by attorney Michael Kemp, told the court he was taken to a canal in South Beach where he was stripped naked, handcuffed and thrown in while he struggled for his life until he was made to plead guilty. Bo, a.k.a. Boo Boo, also alleged that police officers stomped on his head several times when they arrested him at his home. Michael Kemp, who represents Bo, claimed he was denied access to see Bo while in custody, and police officers told him the accused was in protective custody. 24-year-old Leon Lyndon Chase, a.k.a. Smiley, also of Matthew Street, Nassau Village, was not represented by an attorney. He also alleged that despite turning himself in, a black bag was placed over his head and he was beaten about the head in police custody, though he could not identify whom his alleged attackers were. Kemp requested that his client be allowed to see a doctor. Magistrate Ancella Evans-Williams granted both defendants' requests to see a doctor. Kemp also questioned the wording of both charges and said based on his understanding, police were searching for two men of a darker complexion than his client and Chase. Both men allegedly shot Sweeting during a botched armed robbery on Monday morning. Sweeting was not with Davis at the time of the holdup. According to police, the officer was in Gleniston Gardens, which begins at the rear of the Prince Charles Shopping Center. He reportedly attempted to withdraw his service weapon to engage the armed suspects before being shot in the abdomen and arm. Sweeting, a 15-year veteran of the police force, was rushed to the hospital where he underwent surgery and is expected to make a full recovery. This is the second officer to be shot during an attempted armed robbery this year. In April, Superintendent Clayton Fernander was shot in a reported armed robbery outside his home in western New Providence. His injuries were not life-threatening. Several men were also charged in that incident. The accused in the Sweeting case were remanded to Her Majesty's prisons. Both matters are fast-tracked to the Supreme Court via a voluntary bill of indictment and will be heard on September 3rd. Reporting for MB12, I'm Royston Jones. Police are tonight investigating the circumstances behind the drowning of a boy at Goodman's Bay earlier today. Reports are that the child, who's believed to be about 11 or 12 years old, was playing in the water with a beach ball that got away from him sometime afternoon. He reportedly went after the ball. A girl who's a little older went after him and both got trapped in the water when the tide came in. Russell Johnson, a jet ski operator, said an elderly man dragged both children out of the water onto the beach. He said he was called over about a minute later to administer CPR. He said he first noticed that the girl was in distress and he was successful in helping her. Then he noticed the boy who was unresponsive. He said emergency medical services personnel and others did all they could, but to no avail. 
When the ambulance came, they did what they did. And I assist the ambulance drivers along with some police officers, took the kids to the ambulance. And also, there was a doctor who came on the scene, you know, he's pretty much Bahamian. And he went into the ambulance along with those kids and he did his best. Also, there was a tourist lady, I, I must congratulate a tourist lady who came along and said that she is a nurse and she also helped. The boy was pronounced dead at Princess Margaret Hospital a short time later. Both children were said to be at the beach with a summer camp. Central Detective Unit officers could be seen at the beach taking statements, though the scene had pretty much cleared by the time our cameras got there. Johnson, who got a commendation from the Commissioner of Police after saving the life of an officer during a training exercise that claimed another officer's life at that same beach several years ago, said he's saddened by today's tragedy. He urged government to put beach wardens on all major beaches, particularly during the summer months. We have, you know, four beaches, you know, major beaches. You know, one which is the Goodman's Bay area, the uh, Sandal Beach area, the Junkanoo Beach area, also the Monaco Beach area. You know, we need lifeguards on these beaches to, to protect our, our, our families, our kids. Police are also urging that children be properly supervised and that they're outfitted with life vests or floaties. After receiving emergency shelter from the Department of Social Services for five nights, two teens are back on the streets in search of shelter and food. They claim they slept in bushes last night because they had nowhere else to go. The pair was raised by a state staying in a series of children's homes. Now they're counting on the government to help them once again. It is scary girl. I never sleep in a bed like this. While most of us were fortunate to sleep in beds last night, 19-year-old Neonando Lightborn says he and his 19-year-old girlfriend, Frianna Knowles, were forced to sleep in these bushes off St. Albans Drive. Any snakes in this bush? Yes, no. The two Ackland natives claim they were taken from their parents and spent most of their young lives in children's homes before coming of age. Lightborn says he and Knowles moved in with his paralyzed mother. However, when their relationship with his family went sour, they traveled to New Providence by boat on Saturday with tickets purchased by the Social Services Department. He says they sought assistance from officers at the Grove Police Station, who then called Social Services. Police Station, and they called my lady named Sweden. I'm a Sweden tell us we could stay in Crony Club for one night, Sunday, and go by the Social Service on Robertson Road, and let us talk. Then we go on out, they say, we could stay at the hotel, when I stay. After their time at the Colony Club ran out, Lightborn claims they returned to social services but were turned away. He says they haven't taken a bath in two days. Noel says they then wandered the streets in search of food and shelter. We try help to get help because like when we were by the road down there, we had one cardboard and we, uh, we put on one sign to say help us please. People give out like $10 and $2. That's when they came across this clearing in the bushes. So how did you pick this place? Like why here? Because me and no relatives uh -huh. too. So we, me and she has to be bush. We just walk in and you see like some outside down, grass down and high. And so we come sleep in the high bad, so people ain't gonna see us. And like, were you were there any insects or anything like that bothering you or? Only like mosquitoes, mosquitoes. mosquito biting and and little, little crabs crawling and cockroaches. Lightborn says they barely slept last night, explaining that their pillows and thin blankets did very little to shield them from rocks and branches poking them in their backs. Were you actually able to even sleep last night? The homeless teen says they're not looking for handouts, just gainful employment and a place to rest their heads at night. However, he says it's been hard to find work thus far because he was kicked out of high school and doesn't have the necessary documents. I ain't got a, 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 a passport or ID or nothing like that. 
did you ever have any of those things or did you leave them back in Auckland? I never had them things. I asked before if they could like, help me like, a shelter to us. And they help us get a shelter or apartment. I they stay in the apartment for a week. I, I show I would get a job. I would pay for my light bill and water bill and stuff. Social Services activist and Justice of the Peace Rodney Monker, who claims he was approached by the teens this morning, is appealing to authorities to help them. I really hope that the government or some other social um, uh, organization would provide them with the necessary assistance. The young man um, can work, right? The young lady can, you know, do work if they can find job. And so they need the assistance. It is sad. Lightburn and Knowles refuse to return to Acklands. He says he's praying they'll find shelter because on an island where the fear of crime is high, he fears his young girlfriend might be targeted. Because on this road, I feel, yeah, I feel safe sleeping in the bush. I feel like something will happen to me, me or not. Mm -hmm. And dying right, just be living in the bush. And, NB12 spoke with a senior official from the Department of Social Services who did not want her name used because she's not authorized to speak publicly about social services cases. However, she said she is familiar with Knowles and Lightborn. She explained that the government agency provided the pair with emergency shelter. However, assistance is limited to a few nights. She said the Department of Social Services is willing to pay the, air for the airfare for the teens to return to Ackland. Otherwise, she suggested they seek shelter at the Salvation Army or Great Commission Ministry.